Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books. Today we're talking about how they're still mad. They're still mad at poor David Zasloff. All he's trying to do is make a successful company. He's trying to pay his debt, which he's doing. They've paid down six billion of their $58 billion debt already. More to come soon. They're making changes. They're canceling things. They're firing people. But who's mad at him and what are they mad at him about? Well, this is coming from Daily Beast. Not everybody loves Daily Beast, but it's interesting to see how upset they get. I have to admit, I, the Warner Brothers Discovery Company is screwing over Latinos, apparently. And the Daily Beast is going to tell us exactly how they're getting screwed over. We have to get into this article. We have to see it from their point of view. And I'm going to give you my point of view. Maybe I'll agree. Maybe I won't. I doubt it, though. I doubt I'll agree with them. Before we get into the article, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it. It's a huge help. The channel's growing. I really appreciate you guys. Okay, so it's apparently, it's not just bad marketing or a lack of internal support for Latino programs. As we've seen at one of Discovery, media mergers can influence the entertainment industry. Diversity and not in a good way. But right now I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna say it is a good way because it is a matter of them focusing. It's not, obviously they're not targeting and saying, hey, let me find some programs that, that have these types of people with this background and this skin color and come from that country or this country and we're gonna program that. It's like, no, what they're trying to do is to merge a company. They had 10,000 people at Discovery before they merged with Warner Media, which has 30,000 people. They're trying to take a company, which both companies were run very differently, and combine those and deal with the current media landscape. And that's obviously going to mean there are going to be changes. I've been covering these changes. This is about my uh, playlist. I'll make sure this is in the description uh, below. I have more than 50 videos I've done over the past six weeks or so talking about all the changes at Warner Brothers Discovery. And why do I care so much about Warner Brothers Discovery? Because I agree with these changes. I agree that stuff should be based on merit. Content should be based on merit. Employers should be hired based on merit. They should be hired based on their ability to contribute to the current company as it's currently formed and as they anticipate they're going to structure it. This is so incredibly significant for our culture to know, and I mean by our culture, I mean, Western civilization to know that good content is being made and is being made based on merit, not based on someone's skin color or background, whatever color that might be. When the team behind the Gordita Chronicles first found out their show was, uh, their show's corporate overlord, say overlord, was headed for a merger, all hands were on deck. Eva Longoria, an executive producer on the series alongside with Zoe Saldana, allegedly went straight to the top and called HBO executive Casey Bloys, who is now in charge of HBO uh, Max and HBO Casey Bloys. Zaslav loves him. And this is Eva Longoria. Uh, apparently, she was changing Hollywood a few years ago. Now, perhaps less. Perhaps less. Because look, it's got to be good content. And the representation thing, it's terrific, but it has to be secondary to having great content. Quote, she really hunted him down, showrunner Bridget Munoz Leibowitz recalled with a laugh during a recent interview with the Daily Beast. The chief content officer seemed reluctant to give a straight answer, the showrunner said, but Longoria wasn't having it. He hemmed and hawed a little bit and then said, yeah, I don't really think we're gonna be able to make it work. The reason, HBO Max would no longer be producing family content. When HBO Max was controlled by Warner Media, it was controlled under uh, Jason Kylar, who was the head of Warner Media. And Kylar made a lot of changes. They had la massive layoffs. One of the groups of layoffs under Jason Kylar was 1,500 people to get to his vision of what he wanted for the company. Could you imagine? I mean, 30,000 people is still a lot of people. No disagreement. But, and 10,000... 10% of them, some 3,000 uh, were sales reps or whatever, selling their uh, advertising for their cable channels. But still, this is a lot of people. 
But the the issue is this: is Kyler had a whole separate vision. His vision was let's put, and he was the founder of Hulu. He knew his stuff. I, I thought it was impressive that they had him at the time, but not nearly as impress- impressive as the new management. His strategy was let's put all kinds of really good content on HBO Max. We don't care what we spend, basically, because we're going to build this thing. They don't agree with that at, under the new management. They're not trying to do that. They're, what they're trying to do is produce good content. But even more importantly, and this is where the, the family content and unfortunately a lot of animation projects come in, the Zaslav philosophy is, he explained it this way in an interview. What Disney is doing with Disney Plus, he admires very much for a major streaming service. And that is that when you first open Disney Plus, you see these different um, thumbnails, basically, where you can go on to Dis- uh, Marvel shows, you can go on to um, you know, whichever their branded content is, National Geographic, because as Zaslov explains numerous times about cable channels, because he's been marketing cable channels at Discovery, 10 to 12 different channels in over 230 countries. That's a lot of marketing. That's a lot of distribution. He knows from his industry experience that viewers tend to only watch five or six regular channels. Like that's their thing. And then everyone in the family might have some different channels that they watch as well. And it may not be all the same five or six. But what he's trying to do with HBO Max, which is going to be merged with Discovery Plus, their separate uh, app, he's trying to get it so that People go to HBO Max's, their new streaming service, and it's the, it's categorically the stuff that people like to see. So there will be reality programming on it, um, and there will be uh, movies and things like that on it. But that categorically, people go there for that content. So they're not a big believer in Discover, at Discovery's management, uh, Discover, Warner Brothers Discovery now, that they can monopolize family entertainment or animation on the new streaming platform. They don't think they can do it. They think Disney's basically got that and then that's fine, but they don't want to be trying to draw viewers to look for family content. While it's true, people might sign up for one hit show. Uh, Stranger Things has, has done amazing things for subscriber growth for Netflix. They've had losses. Uh, at Netflix of subscribers, but a lot of people subscribe because of that hit show. But to randomly go and try to find hit shows, you can't, you just can't do that. It's, it's, it's not a good business model. What they want is they want to have uh, people that go there for the quality of like HBO, and they want to have people that are interested categorically like they do with the cable channels, cooking, golf, things like that. That explanation never made much sense, though, to Munez Libowitz, who didn't understand why they weren't producing family content. Now, keeping in mind, by the way, this was pre-merger. So Casey Bloys was there already at the company, pre-merger. So, so he knew what they were doing, like, didn't actually make sense, but is what Kylar wanted to do. Uh, so she noted during the interview that Gordita creators always saw the series as a straight sitcom. And besides, the showrunner said, Gordita Chronicles was never discoverable under the streamer's family or content categories. It only appeared under Latino. When they talk about discoverable, they mean this is a really, really enormous thing with streaming services. Making the content like we have on YouTube. YouTube is pretty good, categorically, I will say, with the videos that they put next to other videos and help you discover and find content and channels. It's definitely helped me. Um, as far as, the, you know, I don't think that they're going to be focusing on we want a Latino brand because people, human beings don't work that way. You know, sure, uh, there are uh, Sp- uh, Spanish language channels and, and all kinds of channels. There's Univision. There's, there's all types of opportunities like that. But they're not going to say, like, listen, if you want to watch Latino stuff, click here on their main screen. They're not interested in that because it doesn't make sense. They want people that are interested in the brands, not what people look like. As questionable as the Gordita team found Bloy's family content explanation for the show's cancellation, another detail he shared might have even been more telling. As part of the Warner Brothers merger with Discovery, the team learned premium HBO Max shows would migrate to HBO proper. 
Gordita Chronicles just wasn't going to be one of them. A bitter irony tinged the showrunner's voice as she looked back on the moment. So we're not premium. Okay. No, it's not that you're not premium. It's that your content doesn't fit the mix for regular paid HBO. You know, it's the sense of entitlement is scary. I mean, I'm looking at this. I'm just telling you, it's scary. It, this is going to cause a lot of conflict in the country for people to just realize like, well, I'm entitled because I look like this. It's like, no, you, it's, it's for your own dignity that you want to be picked up based on merit. Nobody wants to be canceled. No one wants to lose an opportunity. But if these are, these are um, all people that have an opportunity. They, they've made things before. They have their portfolio. They can show their work around of things they've done, use their contacts, use their, use their connections, and get another opportunity. Nothing goes on forever. This was, after all, the same company that was more happy to trot out the show's creator for its market diversity pamphlets to unceremoniously boot the show after just one season, Munoz Lidwood said, was egregious. No, it's not egregious. It's your, <laughs> this is show business. It's funny because I did a video of this with, um, because Zaslav says this, it's not show friends, it's show business. It's not, okay, you know, you decayed me. You know, you, you didn't follow up on me. You ghosted me. It's like, no, this isn't some friendship thing. This is like, you've got to actually perform because you're performers. And it's got to make good business sense to, to maintain your content. As frustrating the situation might have been, what happened to the Gordita Chronicles was not an anomaly within the industry. Francis Negron Motiener, a Puerto Rican filmmaker, okay, writer and scholar whose 2016 study, The Latino Disconnect, examined the effect of mergers on Latinx. Oh, there's someone finally using that expression. Representation. He's found that generally, as she told the Daily Beast, the word merger for Latinos equals disempowerment. Okay. Combined media consolidation with often lazy or misguided marketing for Latino shows. <laughs> I can't do it. And an apparent lack of support for Latino programs and the abysmal statistics we see each year regarding the community's representation in Hollywood start to make sense. I mean, you know, there are, there's a huge amount of um, Latino population in the United States and uh, very hardworking people, uh, very family oriented people, um, religious people, good people, but there have to be shows that just work. There's gotta be content that just works. And it's not gonna work based on this woman changing Hollywood. You know, it's gonna work based on, well, what's, what's the show about? What's the content? What's the movie about? Who is going to be interested in this? And don't just say, well, there are a lot of Latinos, so they'll watch it. No, they won't. You know, Bros recently had that disastrous uh, gay romantic comedy. Whether it was well-made or not, people didn't want to see it. You can't force people to see things. This is entertainment is a choice. You know, like when you go to a restaurant, you get to decide like, well, what do you want to eat? There'll be maybe a limited amount of things you can choose from, but you don't have to just take one thing. Advocates for mergers will often argue that these moves not only reduce costs and increase consumer choice, but they're also good for diversity. I've never heard that. Um, but I'm sure that this guy tracks that better than I do, the author of this, uh, this story. Negro and Montier's study, which focused primary on, primarily on the merger between Comcast and NBC Universal in 2011, indicated otherwise. What we found is that no, there's less diversity in some cases, but definitely not more diversity. And people that manage to hang on to the boat have less power. Gonna be honest, I don't know what boat they're talking about. In the case of Comcast and NBCU, and no, they are not merging with Warner Brothers Discovery, even though a lot of people say they are, this played out as Telemundo executives who once ruled the roost at the network found themselves subordinate to their white, non-Latino corporate overlords at NBC. Well, that's a management issue. You know, it, when, when um, a company spends billions of dollars on buying another company, you can best believe that they expect to control the management of it, no matter what the people look like at the company or what their background was or what their prior expertise was. It doesn't happen that way. It, 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 you're, not, you're not buying um, an artist, um, like a patron where you're saying, okay, please do whatever you like. Even Pixar has to answer to Disney and it's affected them. Overall, the report states non-Latino leadership at Telemundo rose at a higher rate, okay, than who, who studies these things? I mean, 
in, in, in all seriousness. The number of Latino characters who fell into stereotyped maids, janitors, inmates, cops, okay, also tripled during this period. Oh my God. So, okay. I, I mean, how are you supposed to manage this? You, they have to, if they want to be as part, part of a show, you know, it's a privilege to be able to be an actor on a show. A lot of people want that career. You have to try out for the parts. You know, there are also people of every majority group, minority group, every brand and type of group, they can fund personally whatever they want to fund. Kanye West is a big deal, net worth $2 billion. Um, you know, I, I don't know what uh, John Leguizamo's net worth is. I, you know, I don't know everyone's net worth. They can invest in these projects. And if you invest financially in a project, very often as a producer, and if you're making financial investments, you get to say who you want to hire or not hire and what, like you can do that. That's what people need to do if they want more representation. They have to put up their own money. I mean, <laughs> some people running around with hundreds of millions and billions of dollars in the entertainment industry, they can certainly afford to do this. And I'm not saying that Kanye West uh, was making any other argument. I'm just saying, yes, he's very wealthy. He can make a lot of changes happen. Recently, he was debanked. Uh, Chase cut off his uh, banking relationship. He can afford to buy a bank. I mean, he's got that kind of resources. It might be a great business for him because a lot of people are getting canceled. As one former NBC Universal executive said in the study, if a business is integrated into another, jobs will be lost. That's true. But in the case of minority business, it additionally creates an imbalance by making the Anglo voices bigger, stronger, and more pervasive. I guess that's if an Anglo is acquiring the company. I mean, you can see that I don't really agree with the direction of this article. Um, you know, I, I just look at it as I was raised for merit. Like you better work hard. You better be clever. You're going to have to be lucky. You're going to have to get that, get things done. Quote, so what happens when just a handful of men, and as Munoz Libowitz puts it, we all know what they look like. That's racist, isn't it? Get to decide what content is premium and what is disposable. Well, it, 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 it the, he's in charge of Warner Media. You understand Discovery, all they, I mean, they had a lot of success because of what Zaslav did at Discovery. A lot of success, more than they should have had. Massive expansion internationally, massive. Acquisition of um, scripts, and their cable channels. Big company, it was like a $14 billion deal or something like that, big deal. It, it's not because of what he looks like. You know, it, it's because he made the right moves. He had a great mentor, John uh, Malone, and also Jack Welch from uh, GE taught him how to do this. He did, the, you know, they put in the years. They did the homework. They did the work. They had the trust of investors and they got people to agree, yes, to get this authority. But it, it's not because of what they look like. And yes, they get to decide what's premium because the board of directors made a decision to put management in control and maintain control, have them maintain control of the business. And they want management to make those decisions, not Eva Longoria or someone else. And it's got to be consistent. It, it can't be a representation tab as someone's favorite thing to look at when they open up their streaming service. Like, go click on that. It's all representation stuff. It's like, you can't do that because it doesn't work. People are not interested in that. If they were interested on it, in it, they would have all representation tabs. It would be like, you want to watch uh, Jewish people? Do you want to watch black people? Do you want to watch Latino people? Do you want to watch people who are Asian? This type of Asian? Like, it would be absurd because no one wants that. Certain people want that to happen, but consumers don't want that when they go looking for what content they want. He did cancel a billion dollars worth of content. Batgirl was one of them, uh, one of the projects, $90 million. But it was just stuff that didn't make sense for the company. This corporate cannibalism we're witnessing doesn't feel particularly different from mergers past, said WGA researcher Laura Blum-Smith. It's just not often a newly merged studio will drop the pretense of goodwill as quickly as Warner Brothers Discovery has. They want to make things happen. Yeah, exactly. 
they're doing this for a business reason. The company is using its enhanced market power to slash programming, reduce the content available to consumers. Wait a minute, they're not using enhanced market power at all. And cut costs by squeezing workers. Squeezing them? Like, with their hands? For writers, what this means here is they're losing a potential employer, they're losing jobs on existing projects, they're losing access to their own work, they're losing out on future residuals when the content's canceled or pulled. Well, it's true. When they canceled a lot of content, a lot of content, uh, animated shows are the ones I keep thinking about, um, those creators, they lose royalties. Um, uh, we even did a story the other day where if you bought digitally um, some of the animation shows that they canceled, Amazon has taken them out of your library because when they get canceled, they get super canceled. They're not available anywhere legally. Uh, but no, they're not that squishing workers or squeezing workers and, and, and reducing content available to consumers. Like, they have to make viable content. Media consolidation has already shrunk the number of venues competing for talent in Hollywood, and the lack of competition has brought catastrophic effects for workers who don't have rich parents and therefore a robust financial cushion. Well, how many of us have a robust financial cushion anyway? Uh, you know, I, look, not a lot. Support staffers like assistants and script coordinators are taking on five-figure debts just to keep their jobs in hopes of getting promoted to one day to a livable paycheck. They should not be doing that. Streaming has decimated the pay structures that once allowed writers to string together a career that is essentially a freelance industry. It is. And the lack of competition for workers' talent means pay rates have languished as residuals deteriorate. This is something about the streaming industry I'm not sure if you're aware of, but Netflix in particular, you know, when they buy your content, they buy your content. They're not paying out residuals to my understanding, unless things have changed. They will pay a nice premium over, over production costs to producers for a show, but they're not paying back you know, extra residuals because your stuff was a hit. And just the same, they're not punishing you if nobody watches the shows and they have to cancel them. Adam Canover, whose True TV series, Adam Ruins Everything, oh, I could use that as a title for my series, ended during the Time Warner AT&T merger, told the Daily Beast this year's corporate bloodbath felt like an echo of the merger that killed his show. To me, it looked literally the same, he said. In the seven years since Canova first pitched Adam Ruins Everything, I mean, I've never heard of this show, and my name is Adam, so you think I would have heard of it. At least people, you know, give me a hard time or something. Has list of pitchable, okay, his list of pitchable venues has diminished to a fraction of its original length. Divisions that once competed for content like True TV and TBS have been folded under shared umbrellas and too often eventually dissolved as original content hubs. This means fewer networks, uh, fewer network homes for shows that cater to so-called niche audiences or fall outside the box. According to Munez Leibowitz, a name I love very much, if there are few outlets for a writer to pitch, less and less, and an increased number of those outlets are catering primarily to middle America, whatever that means, it just narrows the target. This is what that means. Late HBO, late off HBO Max execs reveal Warner Brothers Discovery is killing off diversity and quartering, courting middle America, which is just to say they're courting stuff that is just content that people want to watch. I mean, they're not taking risks on stuff that people don't want to watch just to give people jobs. I mean, you. It's called like a make work job. They're not doing it. So, so obviously I'm gonna give you a link to this article in the comments below. Quote, our whole brand and everything we're doing it, we're doing is completely what we call new mainstream, Valdez told the great Daily Beast. They're an American family, they haven't migrated. It's kind of hard to be an immigrant when you've been here for 500 years. And yet when it comes time to market the original series at Nickelodeon, one image kept coming back to up sombreros. I don't think they were evil, that's kind of you, uh, said of the Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon marketing team at the time. They were just uneducated. I don't believe it was some kind of racist, horrible thing they were trying to do, but it was offensive, obviously, because they didn't like that the characters had sombreros. I mean, you, you see where this is going. I can't believe it's going on and on um, quite this uh, much, but 
I don't believe for a second that they're going to be selecting out people for their skin color or their historical background or what country they come from and say, yeah, they're going to uh, not do shows for people of this type. But it does come top down because they're just like they do with their channels. They're developing brands. They're developing things that consumers will say, I like this. This is what I want to see on a regular basis. So if they're going to be pitching lots and lots of new kinds of shows just focused on um, niche representation, it's just not going to work for Warner Brothers Discovery anymore. Um, maybe the old Warner Media did some of that. They thought they would try for some of that. Um, they would get intimidated into eight by agents into doing some of that. Uh, Zaslav is not intimidated. And more and more people are kind of coming around to understand like what his strategy is um, for Warner Brothers Discovery. And it's a, it's a really good strategy. Produce good content and sell it in as many places, platforms, and countries as possible so that when they make content, they know they're going to recoup the cost and they may have a hit. And that's what you do as a publisher. The first thing you look at is, how do I make sure I get my money back? Because in publishing, you never know. You don't know if it's going to be a hit. You don't know if it's not going to work. It's the same thing here. All right, let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. I really like to see your comments. I try to comment on as many of them as I can and read all of them. I do read every comment. Definitely let me know what you think. All right, please do subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it. It's a huge, huge help. And I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.